Hello everyone. This is our second week in the Gospel of Mark uh, and I do hope you're finding it a real encouragement and challenge in your own walk with the Lord. Today I want to read just a few verses from Mark chapter 3 and beginning at verse 13. It says, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted and they came to him. He appointed twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he appointed. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, to them he gave the name Boanerges, which means sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. This was a crucial decision that Jesus made of choosing 12 men who would be set apart as his 12 apostles. We know that Jesus had many other disciples than the 12. In Luke chapter 10, it says that Jesus sent out 72 of them. And in the following verse, it says he went, he, he went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there and a great number of people from all over Judea and Jerusalem. So there were many, many who were designated his disciples. But out of that crowd of disciples, he chose 12, Mark's Gospel tells us, that they might be with him. That was the first reason he chose them. And that he might send them out to preach and have authority to drive out demons. They were the two purposes for which he set them apart, to be with him, and they stayed with him for the rest of his ministry, and then to send them out and equip them with authority to preach the gospel and to drive out demons. Now what kind of people do you think Jesus would give this responsibility to? Who was he looking for? I don't know what you think about that, but some of us may assume that he was looking for rather extraordinary people, spiritual super people in some way. But the reality is that he called a group of extremely ordinary people, people represented in some way by the people listening to this devotional. When I first became a Christian, I used to think that there were certain special people that God used. And I wasn't one of them. I didn't have the right kind of background, the right kind of personality, the right kind of gifts. All those things that I thought disqualified me from God ever using me. And that the best I could do is to support those that God does use by praying for them. And although I wanted to be used by God, I honestly felt that I was not the kind of person. What a wonderful discovery to make that Jesus Christ specializes in using ordinary people with all the failures that are part of the baggage of our lives. Now here in this list of 12 men, what a bunch of very ordinary people they are, ranging from Peter, the outspoken, impulsive disciple, to Thomas, the pessimist and the doubter, from arrogant James and John who wanted to, de to destroy their enemies, to James, the son of Alphaeus, who was so meek and mild that most of the gospel writers forgot to mention him, from Simon, the zealot, the nationalist, to Matthew, the tax collector, from John, who rested his head on Jesus' shoulder, to Judas, the traitor, who for 30 pieces of silver was willing to see Jesus go to his death. What a bunch of ordinary people, probably the equivalent of who we are. But the marvellous thing is that Jesus takes ordinary people and he calls them to do extraordinary things. What is the key to ordinary people doing extraordinary things? What is the extra 
in the ordinary that makes the ordinary extraordinary. I'll tell you what the extra in the ordinary is. It's Jesus himself. He gave them authority, it says. He called them to himself. He sent them to preach and to heal the sick and to drive out demons. You see, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. Listen to this. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. It was a great day in my life when I was willing to acknowledge I'm foolish, I'm weak, I'm numbered among the things that are not, because that's the very category that Paul says Jesus exhibits his power. So if you're going to boast, he says, boast about the Lord. So 12 ordinary men who travelled with Jesus, these are the ones to whom he's going to entrust turning the world upside down. Not because they themselves could say, Lord, here's my list of qualifications. I hope you're impressed. No, it's because I come as one who is weak and foolish and I say, please exchange my weakness for your strength, Lord. My foolishness for your wisdom. I come as I am. Lord Jesus, take me, cleanse me, fill me, use me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, which brings encouragement and challenge to our lives. Thank you for the Lord Jesus who bore our sin in his body on that cross that not only what, that we might be forgiven but that you might take ordinary people such as us and cleanse us and fill us with your Holy Spirit in order that we might make a difference in our generation. Make this real in our lives, I pray. Help us to be increasingly conscious of our own human weakness so that we may be supplied day by day by the strength of your mighty power so that Christ may be glorified in our lives to his praise and to his glory. Amen. Well, thank you for listening. God bless you as we continue this series through the Gospel of Mark.